of our book. Uh, since we are going over the respiratory system, um, I want to talk about chapter 40 and 41, but the first chapter I'm going to go over is chapter 40, which deals with the upper part of the respiratory system. So that's like your nose, your, 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 your throat, and, um, and your sinuses in your nose. So a lot of the things, a lot of the drugs that we're, we're prescribing or giving to the patients are for the common cold, uh, rhinitis, which itis means inflammation. Rhin means nose, like rhino, like you know rhinos have like the little nose uh, thing. So rhinitis is inflammation of nose, and it could be acute or allergic. And we have sin uh, sinusitis, which is inflammation of the sinuses in the nose and we have acute pharyngitis. So um, I'm gonna talk about the drugs that are mentioned in the book to treat these conditions. And the first one I'm gonna start talking about are antihistamines. Um, to talk about antihistamines, I first want to talk about histamine and what it is. So histamine is a, is a protein <clears throat> and it is released by white blood cells called mast cells. So these are really big cells and they have a really big nucleus because they're responsible for discharging um, granules of histamine. So um, when there's like an allergic reaction, you have allergens that stimulate these cells and they release histamine. Now what histamine is useful for is, um, is it, it makes you awake and alert, uh, bronchoconstriction, because you don't want um, any more allergens, so you're like, no, like you constrict. Uh, vasodilation, um, so you know like sometimes you get you get a like red when you have an allergic reaction. You get a red spots. It's because there's being a vasodilation, um, so it causes redness of the skin. So this is what hist histamine normally does, and it's important because some of the drugs that are antihistamines um, they cause drowsiness. But I'll talk about that later. But just keep in mind the effects that histamine normally has. So um, I want to start from the top. <coughs> And we have, um, so the, the book says antihistamines for allergic rhinitis. We have the first generation antihistamines and what they do, so, so histamine um, is being released by these cells. So what the drugs do or what all antihistamines do is that they block the, the histamine receptors. So you're, you don't get that activation, that, the allergic reaction. And um, we have, the classes don't really matter. I, I, we do have them in the book. Um, but a good way to remember these specifically, the alkylamin derivatives, is that it starts with A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. So that's a, that's a good way to remember these. And they, they all end in phenyramine. phenyramine. So um, the alkylamine derivatives, bromphenyramine, chlor... I, I don't know how to say them that well, but chlorphenyramine, dexchlorphenyramine. So that's those. Then we have other drugs, <coughs> clemastin fumarate. Clemastin fumarate. Um, th this one is important. I put a star because we have a prototype drug chart on it. And this is denphenhydramine. A lot of people know it, Benadryl. That's why I put the, the brand name for this one because a lot of people, we've taken Benadryl to, for an allergy. Diphenhydramine, diphenhydramine, Benadryl. Uh, this is all, uh, one of the only ones that are, is used to treat anaphylaxis, which is like you have a severe allergic reaction to like pollen and you don't want to like die because there was like a couple flowers around, you know? So uh, Benadryl is one of those. Most of these don't work for anaphylaxis, but Benadryl does work for anaphylaxis. And then next we have cyproheptadine. Cyproheptadine. Level cetirizine. Level cetirizine. I have this in green because there's another drug that's a second generation histamine that also um, that also has the word structure similar to this one. So that's a good way we're gonna remember the other drug as well. Level cetirizine. Okay, so next um, other drugs that we use of our antihistamines are codeine, uh, codeine and tripolinidine. Codeine and tripolinity. Even though codeine is, um, it, it, we're going to talk about it later, but uh, yes, this combination drug of codeine, tripolinide, and pseudoephedrine. And also another combination is acetylene and fluticasone. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the second generation. So second generation, the advantages 
of the second generation versus the first is that they have less side effects. Um, so remember the drowsiness I was talking about? Uh, histamine is responsible for making you awake and alert. alert. So um, the, the side effects are mostly of the first generation is that they cause you to be drowsy. And you don't want that um, if you're driving and stuff. So a lot of people use a second generation antihistamine. Um, and also if you're gonna be using the first generation, uh, you don't wanna drive. That's one of the nursing implications to make sure your patients don't drive because of that drowsiness. Um, so other things that, that another, some other side effects because they're antihistamine is dry mouth and anticholinergic. And you want anticholinergic because you don't want to have a runny nose all the time. Um, the, the anticholinergic effects are good for, uh, there's allergic rhinitis and there's um, rhinitis, like inflammation of your nose, caused by the common cold. So um, when, when there's um, a lot of mucus, you want the anticholinergic effect. Uh, but it does cause drowsiness and dry mouth. So second generation, we have acet, acet last, Acelestine, uh, cetirizine. This is the one I was talking about that we have another one that's kind of similar. Level cetirizine. Uh, so cetirizine, cetirizine. Um, a lot of people, I've seen commercials with Zyrtec. Uh, maybe some people can remember it that way. Fexofenide, fexofenadine, fexofenadine, loratadine, lesroatadine. So the reason I put green here is because you don't want to have a re you you don't want to have a reaction when you're dining like when you're eating, um, so so antihistamines you'll remember it because it, you don't want to have a reaction when you're dying, so they end in dine dine and dine, like dying like you're eating or drinking or whatever. <laughs> okay, so now um, we're still talking about drugs to treat uh, um, rhinitis or like reactions with the upper um, part of the respiratory system. So now we're going to talk about systemic and nasal decongestions. So um, they work on your sympathetic nervous system. This is often called your fight or flight uh, system. Um, basically, if you're being attacked by a bear or something, um, you want to, to run, be able to run and fight. Uh, so you need air, airways open and things. And we use them uh, for, for the diseases I talked about because um, we want, look, there's nasal, okay, there's nasal congestion, and um, what happens is that there's vasodilation, and you have a runny nose. Um, but since we're getting the, giving the sympathomimetic drugs, they cause vasoconstriction and, um, and less mucus. So it's, um, it's activating the fight or flight response. You want to have more air and less runny nose less runny nose and um, you want basal constriction because you don't want you want the airway to be open so that's why these drugs help with uh, nasal conge congestion uh, but they one of the side effects is that they cause uh, a person to be jittery or nervous or restless because you're you're um, you're stimulating the fight or flight uh, system um, so so there's like two different types of drugs that are mixed up here um, there's the drugs that I consider to, to act like epinephrine um, because epinephrine is a sympathomimetic uh, hormone and um, it, the drugs are with stars here. So we have ephedrine, ephedrine. Uh, we have phenylephrine, phenylephrine, and we have pseudoephedrine, pseudoephedrine. They kind of in word structure are similar to epinephrine. So that's the way you can remember those. And they're longer lasting because they work on the whole system, the sympathetic system. Um, but we also have um, the nasal decongestion. A thing, uh, sorry, a thing to, to watch out for, since they are working on your sympathetic nervous system, you want to watch out for your, your uh, blood pressure, your heart rate, and your glucose. Because since it's the sympathetic, you want to fight or flight, so your BP is going to go up, your heart rate, and your glucose. So watch out for patients that have like hypertension or uh, hyperglycemia. Um, oh, but moving on to nasal decongestions, there's these, the ones that have zoline. Zoline and zoline. Nephazoline, oxymetazoline, and tetrahydrozoline. 
Um, and that's it for, for, for those. Now we're gonna talk about intranasal buccal corticoids. <clears throat> so these are for allergic rhinitis, again, like uh, the inflammation of the nose. And I mean, we've already gone over um, glucocorticoids and their anti-inflammatory effect. Um, they decrease the rhinorrhea, which is the discharge of your nose, sneezing and congestion. Um, so a lot of them, and in zone, 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 zone. So if you see zone, and think of glucocorticoids. And um, we have beclomethazone, budenalcide, uh, <laughs> dexamethasone. Dexamethasone, it says in the book to not have more than 30 days. Uh, flunisolide, fluticasone, uh, mometasone, triamcinolone. So these are glucocorticoids. Um, you should already know what they do. Uh, they're steroids and they have that anti-inflammatory effect. Okay, so um, antitussives and expectorants. So if you know Spanish, you know that in Spanish, cough is, is tos, tos. Um, so so antitussives is anti-cough because uh, tos means cough. So w drugs that are antitussives is their anti-coughs and expectorants. Expectorants, uh, you can remember it, like I, ex I expect you to throw out mucus, you know, like I expect you, so you're discharging mucus. Um, so we have, op for the first an uh, antitussives are opioid antitussives. Uh, they're non-addicting, opioids are usually like narcotics and people drink them for pain, but these are, um, <clears throat> they're non-addicting. And we have codeine. We already mentioned codeine, remember. Uh, we have it here, it is an anti -tusive. Then we have guafenicin. Guafenicin isn't an opioid. We'll talk about it in a little bit, but it has codeine, so that's why it's under this category. We have homotropine and hydrocodone. So the, way, the reason I have this green here is because um, they're under opioid. So you can remember it like I'm, I'm tripping because I'm high. It, I mean, sometimes you have to come up with funny ways to remember stuff, so. I'm tripping because I'm high. It's an anti- but actually, the, it, it doesn't have that effect. It doesn't make you high. The, these drugs are opioids, but they're non-addictive op opioids. But you can remember it like I'm tripping because I'm high um, for your opioid anti -tusives. So you're gonna remember codeine. Uh, hydrocodone, or well, you can also remember it like codone, like it has uh, codone. High, and I'm tripping because I'm high. <laughs> okay, so next we have non opioid antitussives. Um, we have a benzonatate, dextromethorphan, hydrobromide. The reason it has a star is because there's a prototype drug chart on it, so uh, you might want to look more into the, the, this drug. And then we have promethazine with dextromethorphan. So this one has a little bit of this one. So expectorants, um, what do they do? Uh, oh, I forgot. Um, so why do we even cough? Uh, basically, we, it's, uh, so the cough comes from the cough center in the medulla. And the purpose of coughing is because you wanna clear your airway secretion. So it, it actually has a purpose to cough. But sometimes you have a sore throat and you're just coughing and it's non-reproductive, it's irritating, uh, you're coughing for no reason, it, block, it, um, it doesn't allow you to breathe properly. So that's why we take the, the anti-tussives. Um, so moving on, the last drug I'm gonna talk about is the expectorant. So the expectorant, I told you, you expect to take out mucus, you expect something to come out. Um, and what's gonna help the thing come out is guafenicine. I put guaf, because it's like, ugh, like, like, ugh, like it's nasty, you know, like the mucus is coming in, ugh, like wakala, you know, like nasty. So that's why it's guafenicin. But a lot of people have taken this already and they know it by robitusin. robitusin. And it, you should increase fluid to help loosen the mucus. Uh, but that's what this drug does, it loosens the mucus. And um, next is a combination drug, guafenicin and dextromethorphan. Um, yeah, so these are all the drugs that are in the book.